Virginia. And he didn't and waste any time, right? He got off uh, <laughs> to it. a rousing start with a bunch of executive orders, including one banning mask wearing mandates in schools. He was asked about that. And Is he how, killing children? How, how is he going to impose his will if schools like the school in Arlington County uh, resist? Ask order. Uh, Arlington County Public Schools essentially said it was going to ignore the order. Is there anything you're going to do to make that school system comply? Well, first of all, we wrote the order specifically to give all of the school systems basically eight days to get ready, to listen to parents. And the fact that that tweet came out from Arlington County within minutes of my executive order, well, what that tells me is they haven't listened to parents yet. And if there's one thing that hopefully everybody heard in November is it is time to listen to parents. So over the course of this week, I hope they will listen to parents because we will use every resource within the governor's authority to explore what, we're, what we can do and will do in order to make sure that parents' rights are protected. And it's not just him. His uh, similarly newly minted attorney general, Jason Miares, uh, he uh, announced that uh, he is opening major investigations into both the Virginia Parole Board and Loudoun County Public Schools, Good. which was ground zero in this these CRT and COVID battles in uh, Northern Virginia for the state of Virginia. So he announced that, too. So they're hitting the ground running, uh, much like DeSantis did when he won in Florida uh, almost four years ago now. And he is facing re-election, arguably the most important gubernatorial election in the country, because uh, except for Trump, I would say DeSantis right now is the leader in the clubhouse in terms of potential Republican presidential nominees for 2024. And uh, you can tell because the sharper knives are coming out for DeSantis, including hysterics from his left wing opponents in the state. One of them running for governor is a uh, 30-something attorney who's the Florida Ag Commissioner. Her name is Nikki Fried, and uh, she had this to say about DeSantis uh, to the uh, public, uh, the NPR affiliate in Miami. Take a listen. You have called the governor an authoritarian, even tweeted that you think he's like a dictator. What's your response to critics of that statement, that type of rhetoric? They think it goes too far. Not at all. Growing up in Miami and having, you know, neighbors that were Cubans, growing up with hearing the stories of so many of our Floridians who have left uh, dictatorships and communism and socialist countries and coming here to the state of Florida for capitalism, for uh, open opportunities to succeed. He is doing everything possible to take away power from local governments, taking away people's abilities to protest, making it harder to vote, talking about, you know, banning books. Um, that's what dictators do. Wait for um, it. Instead of listening and trying to govern with the people, he's trying to govern over the people. And, you know, that I'm sorry. You know, I, I'm a, a student of history, too. I saw the rise of Hitler. I, oh, I learned of those God. stories. Are you uh, comparing DeSantis to Hitler? In a lot of ways, yes. I have studied <laughs> Hitler and how he got to power, you know, wanting his own militia uh, and, and having his own. There honor. are other states that have one. Absolutely. But the reason why this governor wants it is different than the other states that have been utilizing it for emergency purposes. This governor is doing it for the sole purposes of power and in doing so to make fear and to instill that, to blame people for what is happening in their lives, blaming certain parts of our society and our culture. And, and that's exactly what, what Hitler did uh, to the Jews back you know, during um, oh World War II. Oh. What would you say to those who find this comparison offensive, the whole idea of Godwin's yeah. law, that once you compare something to Hitler or the Nazis, you've lost the plot? Not at all. I mean, look, you know, it, do I think that we're going to get to the extent of, of, of Hitler's power? Of course not. But the rise of his power <laughs> and what he did to scapegoat certain parts, and especially the Jewish community in, in Germany, and how he utilized um, taking, going after the media, going after and, and scapegoating people and blaming people and, and p putting fear and then taking over the military – that's what this governor is doing. And, and when, especially going back to all of my you know, friends that from the Latin American countries who've left here for freedom, um, that is not what this governor is doing. Yeah, a lot of those, uh, those, con those uh, residents of Florida who've left oppressive countries for freedom 
uh, are Republicans. Uh, Nikki Fried is going to find out for obvious reasons because they're tired of living under people like Nikki Fried. Um, it's just remarkable that that's the left's position now. If you don't impose mandates, you're a fascist. If you don't support the mandates, if you don't support government mandates, that's how you know you're a fascist. If you restrain government, either restrain yourself at the state level or you restrain government at the local level, as DeSantis has done, that's what a fascist is now to the fascists on the left. I mean, we really are in the place. uh, It's incredible, but we really are in the Orwellian place of freedom and slavery. For more on this, we're pleased to be joined by John Hinderaker, president of the Center of the, Amer- uh, of the American Experiment, contributor to PowerlineBlog.com, too, which is must-read uh, daily, PowerlineBlog.com. John, thanks for joining us again. Appreciate it. Hey, glad to be with you, Dan. So, look, we're not saying that it's going to get, like, Third Reich bad in Florida, John, but, um, <laughs> you know, he, that, that's the direction that he's on. <laughs> Well, Dad, here's the thing. I mean, it's a great tribute to Ron DeSantis that he's the new Hitler, because right. if you are the Republican that the Democrats are afraid of because you're popular, you're winning, you're effective, uh, that's when the Hitler analogies start to pop up. Dan, as it happens, I just got back from three or four days down in Florida. And on Friday, I was privileged to be part of an event where Ron DeSantis spoke. The guy is fantastic. I mean, we've all seen this crowd that got up and cheered. And so um, I'm not surprised that the Democrats are afraid of him. If If they've been watching him in action. And, of course, one of the ironies is, you know, Florida is where everybody wants to be, including right. all the Democrats. They don't see, yep. you know, you right. name it. They, well, there's it's, a reason it's, for that. This is par you for know, the course. They, they hate America. Everybody in the world wants to come to America. They hate Florida. Everybody in America wants to go to Florida. Right. Yeah. People don't tend to flock to dystopian third <laughs> right. <laughs> well, do you, so when you watch or saw him the other day, do you think he's gearing up for a 2024 presidential run? I sure hope so. I, I think he is. I think he's going to sweep to a stunning, you know, re-election victory later this year. And and uh, I, I think he's 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 pointing toward uh, twenty four. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing too, the, the timing of this is perfect because his uh, his uh, recent appointee to be the state surgeon general, uh, our friend, we've had him on many times, Joseph Ladapo, who we brought across the country from UCLA. I mean, in terms of people that, you know, staked out positions early and let's assess who was thinking clearly when clear thinking was so I mean, it still isn't so so much short supply, but it was really needed then because there was so much more that was unknown. In March of 2020, uh, Dr. Joseph Ladapo from the Geffen School of Medicine, UCLA, now Surgeon General at the state level in Florida, uh, please don't believe politicians who say we can control this with a few weeks of shutdown to contain a virus with shutdowns. You must either go big, which is what China did, or you don't go at all. And he, and he talked about keep shutdown short, keep the economy going, keep the schools in session, keep jobs intact. And so th- those were his words in a today in an op-ed in USA today, March 24th of 2020. So I, I, the other thing I like about DeSantis is he looks for people that are willing to be leaders in their own fields, that are willing to think for themselves and turn out to be correct, as Ladapo so obviously has been, and he brings them in to be part of his team. I think that's right. DeSantis, when I heard him on Friday, talked a lot about uh, COVID and Florida's response to COVID. I think events have worn him out. Obviously, Florida was doing the right thing, and I think more and more people are are recognizing that. You know, one of the talents that DeSantis has is really striking to me is, you know, he's a very smart guy. He's got great academic qualifications and a wonderful career and so on. He's only in his 40s. But, but he has this great talent of, of talking in a way that everybody can understand. And, and he, after this event on Friday, one of my friends said to me, you know, people compare DeSantis to Trump, but that isn't really right. The guy we should be comparing DeSantis to is Ronald Reagan. And I think that's absolutely correct in his ability to communicate on complicated subjects like proper governmental response to a, a, a virus uh, in a way that's clear and coherent and that, and that communicates with everybody. It, it's a great talent.
Yeah, well, he's he's an explainer because he's on top of his job. And so Mm -hmm. and and because he knows what he's doing and he's, you know, into the day to day, he can offer explanations for what was done, rationales for what he wants to do. And as you said, he's just good at communicating those his ideas in uh, no uncertain terms. And, um, you know, to me, and by the way, Dad, by the way, he doesn't read it off a teleprompter either. Exactly. I mean, to me, I mean, you know, this may offend some Trump supporters, but I've said it before. To me, DeSantis has all of the attributes of Trump and none of the deficiencies. I think that's right. And plus, they didn't lose in 2020. I mean, Trump continues to be obsessed with the result of that election and wanting to refight it. I don't blame him. Uh, but but that's not what we need. We, we need to look forward, not backward. Yeah. Did you watch his speech in Florence, Arizona over the weekend? Just bits and pieces. Yeah. I'm, isn't it getting old <laughs> for anybody? Or well, I, I... I think so. I, I, I think, you know, putting, I mean, I, election integrity is very, very important. Every Republican who runs for president in 2024 is going to talk about the importance of election integrity. Yeah, yeah. But that is different from trying to refight the battles of the past. The voters don't want to look back. Voters always want to look forward. Right. Yeah. God gave us uh, two eyes in the front of our head to look forward, as they say. Right. Uh, and, uh, and but, but but that doesn't mean that it's not helpful when he raises some questions that other people are raising, as Ted Cruz and Tom Cotton did last week. The question of what was the FBI's participation? What was their distribution of assets on January 6th? You want to have this January 6th star chamber well, then let's get a full accounting of what happened and who did what on that day. But the FBI is basically taking a mum's the word approach. Yeah, don't hold your breath waiting for that accounting. You know, a few days ago, there was this this scene in the Senate uh, Judiciary Committee where they they had as a witness uh, one of the senior officials in the FBI. And Ted Cruz kept asking her, were FBI agents or informants? involved? Did they commit violent crimes? Did they urge others toward violence on January 6th? And she kept saying, I can't answer that. I can't answer that. And, um, you know, one would hope that there's a straightforward answer. That is no. But but what we've seen out of the FBI in recent years is that it's been so politicized. It's so willing to engage in questionable activities like the, the Whitmer kidnapping plot, for example. That was yeah, one of several. One. Yeah. I, it's hard to have a lot of confidence uh, when they won't answer the question. And especially how they treated Larry Nassar's victims. But back to, you know, that hearing, uh, do you know who Ray Epps is, John? Well, I do now. <laughs> you know, I'd seen the name. Yeah. And I had paid a lot of attention. And and so I researched him a little bit after that hearing. And, and uh, you know, apparently he's the one guy who's not rotting in jail after January 6th, despite initially being on the short list of, of wanted people. I think he's down in Arizona. His lawyer assured us that he's not an FBI uh, informant or agent. And, of course, the liberal press just reported that as fact. You know, case right. closed. <laughs> well, why isn't he in jail? I mean, right. I mean, people it, that were inside the Capitol for two minutes and 18 seconds are in jail for 60 days. Well, and a lot of those people, I mean, we've all seen the video of the of the Capitol uh, uh, Police opening the doors and, and just kind of letting people in. And they're walking in between the rope lines and taking pictures and just peacefully walking in. I don't know how many of those people are still rotting in jail. You know, I don't know what they did. He is John Hindraker, president of Center of the American Experiment and contributor to PowerlineBlog.com. John, thanks as always for joining us. Appreciate it. Hey, great to be with you. Bye-bye. Thank you. And he joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. Connect with Dan and Amy on the AM560 The Answer mobile app. Just text the word app to 64636 to download the app today. Signature Bank is Chicago's fastest growing independently owned business bank. It's a bank where relationships still matter. 